with a um, with a shortened metaphor for everyone, and uh, kind of to set the stage for um, the topic of what is soccer. And uh, the metaphor goes like this: uh, I am not I am not an art expert, and I don't know if any of you are experts in the area of art, but I am not. And if I were in a museum and I were walking around looking at some of the paintings, um, I wouldn't have much information or references in my brain what I was looking at. And then if someone came up to me, maybe one of you, as I said, are an art expert, and uh, you were gonna help me out and begin to give me some, um, some information on art. So I could just appreciate the paintings more than just staring at them and saying, well, oh, that's a really pretty picture, right? So you began to give me information. Now the question becomes, how much information would I want and in what detail? Would I want just to be overloaded with bits and pieces of art information and never really truly understanding any of it, but just receiving information from the art expert who is now helping me understand art better uh, and just receiving information from that person. And when they are finished, they have just basically overloaded my thinking. And I have all these small pieces of information but I really don't understand any of it. Or would I rather have that art expert go into one area of art and explain more in detail and allow me to ask some questions potentially and more in detail explain to me about one specific area or concept of art? Well, I think asking that question is answering it. I think the majority of us would not like to have just a bunch of bits and pieces of information. We would like to have maybe one piece of information that we, that we understand, that we understand. And then later on, whatever that may be, I could potentially go into another area and begin to make myself more knowledgeable with that, that area of art. So with soccer, it's sort of the same way, okay? So if you looked at this itinerary for this evening, um, there's quite a few things on that itinerary. There's quite a few bullet points or topics on that itinerary. Obviously, we're gonna be done here probably in about 35 minutes or so. Um, so in view of just running through these topics and just giving you little small pieces of information, and jumping from topic to topic every few minutes, let's just stay and focus on one topic. And that topic is, what is soccer? What is soccer? And if looks like there's quite a few people on this Zoom, and as I look at everyone, and if we ask everyone that question, uh, if we have 30 plus people on here, uh, parents, uh, we would maybe get 25 to 30 different answers. Everything from soccer is scoring, soccer is passing, soccer is running, soccer is playing hard, soccer is about passion, and we would get all these, okay? Unfortunately, that's not what is soccer. This is what soccer is. And then let me begin this, and then Mike can jump in and uh, give you some of his reflections. Soccer is this. And this is worldwide. It really doesn't matter if you're playing for the steamers at uh, Order Park or Mini Hop Park, okay, or if you're a professional player playing in the English Premier League, okay, and making a million dollars a month or a week, okay, soccer is the same. It is the same for them. Every player when playing soccer does the same thing. So this is what is soccer. The first thing a player does, and we'll go on the attacking side, although it could be also on the defending side, but we'll, we'll stay with the attacking side for this evening, all right? This is what soccer is. Soccer is when a player's team 
wins possession and they're with the ball, right? The first thing players begin to do is to collect information by looking around. So that happens by just looking around through the retina of the eyes. They begin to look around and start to do this with their teammates. They begin to communicate with their teammates. And, but it all begins by them collecting information, goes into their brain, okay? And that information comes, they're exchanging information with their teammates. Their opponent is sending them information. Referees are sending them information. Even where they're at on this field, they're receiving information on their positioning. So a player first begins by looking around and then receiving information and then begins to communicate with their teammates. Now, many times there's a little bit of a misunderstanding with that communication piece because we know there's two types of communication. There is verbal and there is nonverbal communication. The majority of the time, the majority of the time in soccer, communication is nonverbal. But if you talk to players, many players and even I'm sure coaches and parents believe that the majority of conversation, the majority of, of communication is verbal. It is not, it is nonverbal. So I collect the information if I'm this player, I'm looking around, getting information from my teammates, from the opponents, from the officials, from where I'm at on this field. And now I begin to communicate with my teammates. I begin to communicate with my teammates. Does my teammate on the left of me want the ball played to his feet? And maybe the teammate on the right of me is begin to run forward. So I've seen all this because I've collected this information. Maybe the defender is closing me down really quickly. So I can't make the pass to the player running forward, but I have to make a sharp pass. That's communication. That's nonverbal. So I see these players. I see these players as I collected this information on my left, on my right, and then I make myself a decision. And let me turn it over to Mike for now. I'm sure Mike has some thoughts because the next thing is deciding what a player does. So remember this, please, okay? Because we're just going to stay with this topic. Player first collects information. Doesn't matter where he's at. Doesn't matter where, if he's in the United States, Spain, Africa, no matter. All players everywhere do the same thing. They collect information, right? And then they're communicating with their teammates from collecting that information. And the majority of that information is nonverbal because I have brought this information into my brain through my retina, through what, through looking at it, through my eyes and that. So I'll turn it over to Mike and let Mike talk about deciding. Hello, Mike. Take myself off mute. Your, your decision, within decision-making, there are two things. There is deciding what to do, and there is deciding how to do it. And if you think about it, you this, this idea of communication and deciding, you perform these types of actions all the time. Another metaphor would be to think about driving. When you drive, you've driven to work possibly this morning, maybe you've driven uh, from work to your house this evening. So as you're driving, you are collecting information. You see if cars are to your left, you see if cars are to your right, you see how far in the distance in front of you a car is, you are constantly collecting information. And then you come up to a stop sign and you make the decision to stop. But again, within that deciding, you decide what to do, stop, but how you decide to stop the car, there's a variety of different ways. You can wait to the very last minute and slam on the brakes. You can slowly ease up to that stop sign, maybe from a hundred or a couple hundred yards away. Or as you get closer and closer, you just ease on the brakes a little bit. Obviously, there is one way most people do it. But if you're distracted, if your attention is pulled elsewhere, you still make the decision 
to stop at the stop sign, but how you decide to do it depends on those external factors around you. Maybe there's an external factor of if you're driving through your subdivision, if you're driving through your subdivision, then the, um, and this is, is a presentation that shows a little bit of that, those three aspects of what soccer is. And this is in total a soccer action. Bill has talked about communication. Decision-making is this piece that we're discussing now. We said yeah. deciding, deciding what and deciding how. And if you think about it, this well, relating, it back to, relating it back to soccer, players perform decisions at any level. At any level, whether they are, whether they are young, and then you, you guys sell it, and then it's you don't need to work. So Scott, I know. Whether, whether players are young players, six, seven, eight-year-olds, or whether they are older, 18, 19, 20, that's irrelevant. They still decide what to do, and then they still decide how to do it. An example within the context of soccer, if I decide to pass to Jason, and he is maybe 10 or 15 yards away from me, I make that decision what to do, pass to, to Jason. But how I decide to pass, maybe I decide to chip the ball to him, maybe I decide to bend it with the inside of my foot, the outside of my foot, how I decide to do that, drive it along the ground, those, that decision how or deciding how, that is all dependent on the external factors around me. So as Bill said, Communication, players communicate with everything, the field markings, their opponent, their teammates, the referee provides communication to them, coaches sometimes provide that information, and we know whether it's positive or negative, we're not here to discuss that tonight, but parents provide that information, or they provide an external factor that kids of all ages will communicate with the amount of information that is collected, just like when you drive a car, the amount of information that is collected will influence the quality of your deciding what and the quality of your deciding how. And so Bill will wrap up because given the age of most of the parents on this call, the, the emphasis at this age would be this last piece the third level of a soccer action, which is the execution of a decision. And with that execution, that's when that technique, because I'm sure you are thinking about players of this young age, as we said, six, seven, eight year old kids, learning, learning the proper soccer technique of these actions that they want to perform. So Bill will um, will discuss a little bit more about the execution of that decision. Okay, so that execution piece is that technique piece, as Mike referred to. And that is not that it's the least important piece in the order of soccer, the characteristics, the logical order of soccer. And as I, and I'm sure you will remember, as I said in the very beginning, everywhere in the world, that technical piece is the final piece. It's the final piece in that logical order. Here's the problem. The majority of people, and I mean by the majority, I mean coaches and when people are watching games, okay, they have this entire logical order reversed. They see the execution, they see the execution, but they do not see what decision the player was making or attempting to make, right? And obviously the communication piece, unless you actually know what the team is trying to do on the field, as far as their tactics, okay? That communication piece can be even more difficult to perceive. But the execution of a decision is that final piece. And this is, as Mike said, this is what a player's ability is assessed by. They communicate, they decide, and then they use their technique. Player's ability is not assessed by 
how well they can dribble, how well they shoot the ball. That is a tool. Those are tools within soccer, but they are not the objective. The objective is communication, decision-making, what and how, and then the technical piece. So players are, and here's how this is all kind of fits together, okay? When players are practicing, right? And as some, I guess Jason might've put this up there now because communication is tactics, decision-making is game insight. And sometimes people refer to that as being able to understand the game, whether it be soccer or basketball or baseball or being able to read the game. And then the execution of the decision is what I just referred to. And that is a technique, all right? So players, as I said, people will have this process reverse. But when you think about it rationally, how can you dribble before you actually make a decision? Oh, I guess you could do it. You could dribble, start dribbling, and then try to make a decision. But then it becomes too late. Because as you're dribbling around, practicing that move, that you did last week at practice, there's defenders coming towards you. There's defenders coming towards you. And now you feel the presence of those defenders. You feel that pressure and you begin to now try to make a decision. And you, and along those same lines, you now try to communicate with your teammates because, oh, I'm dribbling. Now maybe I should try to find somebody to pass to. Now maybe I should try to communicate with my forwards if I'm a midfielder or a defender and I have the ball trying to communicate with my midfield. So then what happens is everything slows down. The decision-making process slows down and soccer is about deciding. It's about deciding and some coaches will refer to it as they like their players to make quick decisions, fast decisions. Well, those decisions are made because the player has a lot of information in their, in their brain. And they again, make that decision based on their game insight. So now they begin to dribble around. They are trying to make a decision. They can't make it, they continue to dribble. More defenders come toward them. Their space around them becomes smaller. And now they will either many times lose the ball they will then maybe many times pass the ball to the other team. And now the attack is going the other way for the other team. But every once in a while, one out of maybe 10 times, a player will just dribble himself out of that situation. One out of 10 times. I mean, that's, that's, not, a very, that's not very good odds for you to be able to do something successfully one out of 10 times. And the unfortunate part is, is because many people, this is all they see is that technical piece. And that player does that one out of 10 times. And he gets out of that situation because of the move he made or his dribbling, his dribbling technique. Okay. Everybody just goes, oh, he's really a good player. And that's all people remember because that's the way the brain operates, right? That's all they will remember that one time. They won't remember the 10 other times or nine other times or 20 other times that he either passed it to the other team or he just lost the ball or maybe he kicked it out of bounds. I mean, we have seen players even dribble out of bounds because they can't make a decision and they have not communicated at all. So once again, communication, verbal, nonverbal, decision-making in the what and the how, and then the technical piece, the execution of those two things. And this is how a player should be, should be <laughs> assessed because this is the player's ability. His ability is not his ability just to dribble or shoot or to pass. His ability is to communicate, decide, and then to execute that. Jason, so, uh, Jason am I able to share my screen? Yeah, yeah, for now. Uh, let me just let me scroll to something and give you a bit of a, a practical example here. And give me just one second. So what we've talked about is a soccer action being three pieces. Communication with your surroundings, deciding, and then 
executing that decision. And as I said, most of the parents here are probably parents of kids just starting out, maybe thinking about that transition from the recreational program of the steamers to the, the select side or the club side of the steamers. And so thinking about, thinking about this communication, decision, execution, those three things have to be present for a soccer action to be a soccer action. So when you send your children to soccer practice, you want them to play soccer. That's what they sign up for. That's what they enjoy doing. And as you look at this soccer field, this is an activity that you see many, many coaches do with young kids. They even do it with kids of all ages. And you see that triangle, that blue triangle, number eight, kick the ball to the right. Blue number four receives the pass. Blue number eight follows the pass. And then blue number four kicks the ball to blue number six. And blue number six kicks the ball to blue number five. And everybody rotates clockwise around this diamond. The issue becomes that if you go back and use that reference of a soccer action, communication, decision, execution, two components are missing from a soccer action because these players, these blue triangle players, they do not have to collect any information because there's no information really to collect. The coach told them where to pass, the coach told them where to run, and then they execute the decision of the coach. There is no communication, there is no decision. All there really is, is this execution, not of the player's decision, but the execution of the coach's decision. And if you think, it doesn't matter any age person you ask, if something consists of three things, but two of those three things are missing, is it still the same thing? Yeah, common sense tells you no, it's something different. So when you go to a soccer practice and you see something like this as a parent sitting on the sidelines, you, you take an interest in what your kids are doing. This may look like soccer, but it's not soccer. It looks similar. There's a soccer ball, there's people with the same color jerseys, but there is no communication and there is no decision because the coach is doing both of those things. So if you think about another example, 10 versus one, is this a soccer action? Are the 10 red circles playing soccer away from or performing soccer actions in relation to that one blue defender? 10 versus one. The answer is yes. Those 10 red players are communicating with each other. They are communicating with the defender and the position of the defender provides information that those red players have to collect because if blue number six runs to the right, then red number four communicates with blue number six and makes the decision, oh, wait, I don't wanna pass the ball in that direction because I would kick the ball close to or at blue number six. So blue number four kicks it in the opposite direction. So uh, red number four collects information in regards to number six's blue number six's position. He makes the decision or she makes the decision to pass away from blue number six. And then, she, and then he or she executes that decision. So even though this is unrealistic, what you see on the top half of that soccer field, that's passing. We said, even though it's unrealistic to play 10 versus one, because they'll never play 10 versus one in a game, that's not necessarily the point tonight. The point is understanding what soccer is and what soccer isn't. So the top picture, the top half, that is passing. That is soccer. The bottom half or the half with the blue triangles kicking the ball back and forth, that's not passing, that's kicking. That's not a soccer action, that's a basic action. And those two things are different. And Bill alluded to this a little bit, the problem, the thinking mistake, 
some coaches, some players, and some parents make is that in that bottom half, those blue triangles will get better at kicking. Coaches will even say to parents or to themselves, oh, blue number eight is really improving at kicking. And that is true. No one disputes that. The problem is that coach then, along with the player, along with the parents, hope or cross their fingers that his improved kicking ability transfers into passing ability. But what we don't know in that bottom half with those blue triangles is the quality of blue number eight's communication and the quality of blue number eight's deciding because those are the first two things that happen and it all happens quick, that C, D, E. It happens quickly, but what we don't know is blue number eight's ability to communicate and decide we have only seen his improved ability to kick, but kicking is not passing. And we said the thinking mistake that many coaches make is they get rid of these defenders in even though 10 versus one is very artificial or very unrealistic, many coaches would look at 10 versus one and say, this is way too easy. We can't have our players play 10 versus one. That's no challenge to them. And while they say 10 versus one is too easy, on many fields where you see practice, there is no defender. The coach has taken the defender out and they end up having their players not play 10 versus one that they say is too easy, but they have their players do four versus zero or five versus zero where they're not passing. They are just kicking the ball from one player to the next. So it's tempting to get rid of that defender because there is a phrase in psychology, what you see is all there is. And it's very, very difficult to see, to see anything but the act of kicking the ball. You don't see the player's communication. You don't see the player looking around and seeing what he or she sees. You don't know what's going on in that player's young player or old player. You don't know what they're deciding or what decisions they are trying to make. The only thing you see is your young son or your young daughter kick the ball. And the thinking mistake is that that action of kicking is all there is. And that's why you see coaches become victim to the same thinking mistake Oh, our players need to improve at kicking. No, they need to improve at communicating, deciding, and executing their decision. So tonight is very important because as a parent, what we have tried to convey to you is not only this reference of what soccer is, but this reference of kicking versus passing. Because now, just like we would have done with players, we have downloaded this reference or these references in your brain. And now when you go out to the soccer field to watch your son or daughter play, what will be provoked is this reference that's been downloaded to you. No different than you download apps onto your phone. You use those apps when they're relevant for you, you will be provoked, this reference will be provoked for you of what soccer is the next time you go out to a field and watch your player, your, your child train. Are they performing passing actions, soccer actions, or are they performing kicking actions? Is what they are doing involve all three components of soccer, communication, decision, execution, or are some of those components, one of them or two of them, missing? Is it something that looks like soccer, but is not soccer? So these, these references are important for you because now we are speaking objectively the same language. Because as Bill said at the very beginning, if we would have asked the question, what is soccer at the beginning of this call, just 30 minutes ago, 
we potentially would have had 20 to 25 different answers. Soccer is fun. Soccer is exercise. Soccer is winning. Soccer is teamwork. You get all of these answers, but what soccer is, is communication, decision, execution. That's it. That's no one's opinion. That's what is universally true for everybody. Cristiano Ronaldo communicates, decides, and executes just like Mia Hamm or uh, any other professional soccer player communicates, decides, and executes. Any professional, any under 10 player, any under seven player performs those actions. The only difference is the amount of space and time that they have to perform those actions. But C, D, E is universal, objective, no opinions. That's what soccer is. And that's what the purpose of tonight was so that everybody walks away from tonight understanding, yeah, we want to be a part of the steamers. We want to play soccer. Then this is what you would do when you were part of the steamers. You will train passing, C, D, E, not kicking. So that's a lot of information and it's, it's probably unique in the thought process of exactly what Mike and Bill said. Everybody has an impression walking in to youth soccer. And once you start to hear how the program is set up, how we've kind of mirrored the program in Scurso, I'm sure all of the parents have seen, you know, the top part of that field diagram where the players were all in a circle. One player was a defender. We called them rascals. And then every player was communicating. They were making decisions and they were executing by passing. We even gave the rascal player an identity. If they won the ball, they tried to play it to a coach. Um, so at, even at the recreational level, there was an opportunity to start to inject what you'll really start to see within the select side of the club. And it's important because there's a bridge between recreational and select. And our job is to be able to help, you know, walk the parents, walk the players through the process because development is tricky. Development isn't a hockey stick curve. It's, it's kind of a bowl of spaghetti. You can go up, you can go down, you can go backwards, you can go sideways. You can have no development over the summer, and then maybe you have a growth spurt. So development is different for every player. Our job as a club is to identify the players that we have uh, sent out the email to and say, from a development point of view, there's a great opportunity to take another step so that we can continue to put players that are like players with like players it enhances the training sessions and it changes the dynamic. With the Scursal program, the net is wide, right? There's a hundred plus kids. There's multiple coaches. There's multiple fields. There's multiple players on each field, but everybody's doing the same thing over the course of the week and over the course of the, the program uh, from March until May. The idea is now to start to take these players who are a little bit more developed and put them together. So that's what the next step is. And I think that from, from, from our point of view, you know, we have another Zoom meeting that'll be more specific to your experience, right? Your experience in the club, what that means to be on the select side. You may have already a child that's in the select side. You may be, you know, coming to the select side with your first child. And our job is to, you know, be a tour guide because again, it's a journey. If, if there's a parent that thinks that this is a specific destination, it'll be tricky because what you think should happen, it might happen, but, you know, children tend to guide themselves at a certain age around 13 or 14, 15 years old. 
they make the decisions. And so then your job, instead of being the tour guide for your child, your job becomes, you know, the uh, caretaker, the assistant, the, you're trying to help and, and not necessarily make all the decisions. And that's important too. Uh, from the club point of view, our job is to provide the resources, the best resources in the area by far. I, I know for a fact, we have the best training modules. We have the best program for parents, the best program for the players. And we have Mike and Bill who are injecting this process of thinking, not only for the players, but for you as the parents and the coaches. We have these same meetings with our coaches. We, we started it in January. It's important to be in an environment that is similar. You know, if you decide to go somewhere else, it's understandable, but you might want to reference what we do as a club and double check before you make that decision because nobody does what we're doing. Nobody takes the recreational side this serious. Uh, we want you to enjoy the game and we want to provide you the best opportunities and your children as well. That's what's important. So, we spent 45 minutes referencing what is soccer. The next call is going to be the June 1st. I think it's a Wednesday. It's going to be the same time. It'll probably be with just Doug and I, because we're going to talk about the club experience itself. But, you know, tonight we had Bill, we had Mike. We also had uh, Will, who's on the call, Will Eske. He is uh, an ambush professional player he has 2014 boys team 2012 and 11 boys team uh christine kiping is on the call these are all coaches that are going to be in this age group in the fall chad boyette's on the call you know he's going to be taking on a team these are all coaches that have been with us and they understand what we're building uh will <laughs> has been actually in the skirsal program and so is chad Christine is involved uh, since probably the beginning of the club. So we have the right people in place to make your experience the best one possible. And that's important. Don't underestimate our intensity to make this a great experience for you. It's important to us. It's important to Doug and I. We want all of the families to enjoy the game of soccer to enjoy the development of your children. And we appreciate uh, your attention tonight. It's, it's a, a late Wednesday night. You don't have to be on this call, but you're here because it's important. It's regarding your children and they're important to us. You know, uh, I've been to heck every practice. I don't think I've missed one yet in the spring. And uh, I enjoy seeing the development. I enjoy seeing what we did tonight in Redbud, the kids there, they're on fire. They're having such a blast. Uh, even last week when it was raining, we had kids out. Um, it's, it's fun. And, and when we do our uh, Thursday night at Order Park, those kids are all engaged. They're learning so much. And so we appreciate your involvement and your commitment. And we certainly look forward to the fall session. And like I said, You've got the best coaching group here, and I believe this is the best club in St. Louis. And so we look forward to seeing everyone again on June 1st. And we'll probably just throw out a couple of emails along the way just to continue to have this uh, mantra of what the club intentions are, what, uh, what the coaching evolution program is. Um, you know, we want to keep you informed. The worst thing that could possibly happen is an uninformed parent. It's just, it's not fun. It's, it's agitating. That is not this club, uh, not at all. And so we appreciate your time tonight. We'll jump on again in June 1st and, and that'll be an open format. So we appreciate everyone's attention tonight. Doug, do you have anything that you wanna add to this before we jump off? No, no, I don't have anything. Um, you know, I know Skersel, kind of ends this Saturday. 
Um, we do have some ID sessions and I think everybody's gotten that information, um, you know, coming up in the next couple of weeks. There's just a couple of sporadic days. We try to stay away from Memorial Day weekend so, so families can have family time um, that weekend. Um, but we do have a couple of them that we'll get some uh, dates out to you guys. And if you guys want to come out, mainly we're just going to be doing some some uh, little games um, just to have the kids running around. It's probably going to be hot, hopefully, with no rain. So, um, but yeah, other other than that, I don't have anything. So, all right, Bill and Mike, thank you for your participation tonight and leading the discussion. Parents, if you have any questions, you can always email. You know, I try to respond as quick as possible. So we appreciate your participation tonight and we look forward to this continued process. So thank you and, and everyone have a really nice evening. All right, thanks. Mm -hmm.